Jay Horn, Kevin Hanks. Before we get to the fun stuff, Kev, that chart of the two-year yield. Mm -hmm. uh, next week, as we kind of close this week out, we're thinking about what's next. I mean, bulls are parading right now, no question about it. But that little creep in the two-year, I feel it gives us something to think about for next week. I think yields creeping in general. With the two-year, you're right. The, the, the two-year is catching people's attention a little more than the benchmark, which is the 10-year. But the 10-year almost hit 4-2 today. Right. It was creeping towards there, kind of ran out of inertia. Yeah. It just uh, keeps the getting downside stuck in there. Yeah. But, well, you know why? It all comes back to something we talked about earlier in the week, Oliver. Not a lot of data to yeah. turn it. But Tuesday, you're getting CPI. There's no better way to move rates than, than a CPI number that either, you know, scares the markets or the, or the markets like. Yeah. So CPI data will, will, will be huge, but you're right though. These markets, even though the moves, you know, the E minis up, up, you know, set seven or seven sixteenths. The, uh, the, you know, the, the SPX over five thousand still feels like a drift, even though it's through an enormously big number, yeah. big round number. It tells me that it's almost doing it incognito. <laughs> and, and there's no real attention at it yet. Well, no but real news this week. You know, we absorbed all the bonds that got auctioned, so right. we were able to kind of look past any bond risk. I think Janet Yellen a week or so ago talking about less supply of bonds, have the overall bond auctions do a little, doing a little better than, than they were in the past, a little more demand, little worries about less supply. So all things considered, you know, the bond market isn't scary yet. What does? Does a 4-2 10 years scare the market? Sure. All right. D does the dollar approaching 10, you know, break it through 105? Maybe. Scare the markets? Probably. A problem for next it week. It did the past. Yeah. Exactly. But not today. All right. So between now and inflation, we've got another big event. Let's have some fun. It's Friday. Bull markets are raging. Super Bowl on Sunday. And it actually does mean some stuff for investors because there's a litany of uh, companies in the gambling and gaming space now streaming to. There's big implications here, Jenny. Yeah, and you mentioned inflation. Actually, as far as like inflated prices, that's what the Super Bowl could entail because, I mean, the ticket sizes is on average $9,000 a seat at Fort wow. Las Vegas. I mean, that's crazy high. And overall, they expect about a, a $1.5 billion dollars to be wagered on the Super Bowl, which is up 35% from last year. So those are elevated prices as far as the elevated levels, at least on a year over year basis. But also some news today that BetMGM is teaming up with X, of course, formerly known as Twitter, which will become their exclusive online sports betting platform. The companies announced this earlier today. They said that basically this is a way to sort of be evolved in the fact that X is right now sort of has that conversation happening in terms of the sports world 24 seven basically. So they highlighted this is a really good way to reach an engaged and an active audience. And I would actually say, X is as far as like not only like honestly stock news but sports news it's it's best in breed because it's constant so I think this is a great great thing all of these I mean, stocks are higher this week this name MGM pacing to gain this week up about four percent we're modestly higher today DraftKings also is having a really nice week up over eight percent so DraftKings FanDuel biggest sports betters in the space but everyone gets a piece of the pie when it's a big event like the Super Bowl some of the most bizarre fun bets will be limited to those uh, off-continent exchanges and uh, uh, gaming venues. But I mean, here there's like you can there's a big article on Bloomberg today about all the different ways to bet. So you like I don't think you can bet on the Taylor Swift stuff in. DraftKings, but like other places you can. You can, just, like if he proposes to her, is like what be, is people are literally <laughs> betting on that. Like like thousands of people are betting on that. This whole thing's like Ridiculous. being uh, superseded by Taylor Swift's presence. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she 50 million views at the, the Chiefs wow. Bills game. So like she has l led to a, a spark in viewership. You oh, can't argue sure. that. Yeah. Uh, and all of the proliferation of the apps, the survival of all the gambling, even from, you know, there was this kind of question during COVID when just money was getting dumped on us by the government and all these companies. All right, how long is the gambling trend going to last? Well, it survived, Kev. I think we kind of knew it would oh. as traders and, you know, gamblers gambling, ourselves. Gambling has never not been enormously important. What it is now, it's out in the sunshine right. now. Right, the fact well, that the game in is a in a publicly Las traded Vegas stock market too. tells you that they've all thrown in the towel. The questions, though, you know, wh when you're younger, you look at the game like a football game, and it's fun, and you see. T yeah. When you get older, 
you really start to look at this like what it is, which is a massive business boondoggle <laughs> fueled by money. Every step is about money. Yeah. From, how can you make it you about know, yourself? Yeah, it's the comeback of Anheuser-Busch, I think is big. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, they, they, they had Dana White. They had Donald Trump. Now they've got Peyton Manning and Post Malone. Right. For, They're for overdoing Bowl. it now. They've skewed too hard the other way. Well, here's the, here's the thing. <laughs> Even though Bud Light is still 29% lower than a year ago, stock's all the way back. Yeah, I know. Uh, almost. Still a little bit below a tie, but it's it's basically there. DraftKings making an all-time high today. I think Paramount 2 is in this uh, because they've got the streaming rights, so like it's pretty easy for me to watch. I don't have to like go through some crazy like streaming uh, debacle to try and find out where to, where to watch it. No kidding. After a week of sorting out what will look like, I mean, the Warner Brothers Fox and ESPN deal, this is pretty straightforward. Yeah, and the Paramount CEO has also said they expect record viewership as well as ad revenue. So I mean, like find a space that this doesn't seem to somewhat lift. I, I've looked up the correlation of the overall markets. The Super Bowl, there really isn't any. I mean, there's been like a few times that the markets have spiked on the Monday following. There isn't a strong enough correlation, but definitely one where names like Paramount that need the views and need this reason to draw people in, is it's a good thing for sure. As well as then you mentioned Anheuser, but also the fact that we're seeing like grocery stores absolutely packed. I mean, liquor sales, Everything about this is, I completely agree with Kevin, it's just about making money, but good for some of these streamers like Paramount, especially, which is lower on the session here. We'll Keep it how. simple, Oliver. Yeah. Booze, food, gambling. Yeah, it works for me. Uh, and go 49ers. Great. What a great way to spend a Sunday. Heck yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, sounds fun. <laughs> Thanks for the look here, guys. Paramount's still down all week anyway, going into having the streaming rights. That's uh, a bit of a head scratcher. All right. Thanks, Jay Horn. Kevin Hanks.